Guys, you are not gonna believe it. We sucked out of this snake to keep it alive. Keep watching because it's it's gonna get it's gonna get intense. And if you're watching this video with an animal that has similar symptoms, contact your local vet. The minute that you bought that animal or you decided to breed it, it's your responsibility. And it's got no one else out there that's gonna help it. So I'm gonna show you something that's pretty horrific. Somebody else contacted me, told me they've been trying to get a hold of me. Uh, trying to ask me if I had some insight or whatever I could do because they've been reaching out to vets. Nobody can uh, take the animal. They don't have an expert available for days. This cannot wait. This is part of the overduck. So this is what sheaths these eggs. This was all full of some uh, gnarly eggs. So this animal has been bred. She's about, was she six years old? She's about six years old. This is her first clutch. So she laid a couple eggs and uh, after that things went bad so what happened was one of the eggs got out of order uh she pushed 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 so her entire her overduct has now come out with some eggs in it the eggs are out of it now um it's been a fair bit of blood there's still eggs inside her so what i'm gonna have to do is i'm going to weigh her i'm gonna put her on systemic antibiotics that's injectable antibiotic i'm gonna actually give her something pretty pretty whoop butt on this because we really need to, uh, she's really setting herself up for a bacterial nightmare. And uh, then tomorrow I'm gonna drain the eggs. But right now I'm gonna get her antibiotics, make sure she's hydrated. So she looks really healthy, uh, a lot of tongue flicking. Her, uh, She's very aware, uh, her hydration's okay, could be better. Some people are telling you to keep her dry, right? Yeah. yeah that was interesting. And yeah. sugar and all, you got all the sugar. different, sugar water advice and all that, and this is not what we're gonna do. So this is about a six year old champagne ball, and the owner struggled to get anybody to look at this, so I'm kind of like last resort Johnny. So let's see if I can uh, do this animal justice and we can save this animal, because this animal's gonna die. It's already in the process of dying right now. It's full of these eggs. And if you trap these in an animal, the animals are gonna become septic. So that's a huge volume of material that is no longer part of your system, so it becomes a foreign body, essentially. And as it starts to decay, uh, it propagates things like bacteria and all that. Plus, it's uh, an organic that is going to tox out the animal and they're gonna get a blood infection. It's gonna poison the body, they're going to die. Uh, she has kicked out a huge portion of her oviduct. So this is no longer a living part of this animal. So she's been so soaking in a chlorhexidine solution. So chlorhexidine with water is antibacterial, antifungal. So we're just basically trying to knock back ambient bacterium that are in the environment because uh, these animals are clearly, this is going to be uh, taxing on their immune response. So she is in an anti antibiotic right now, so that's gonna help. All right, I'll point out one thing. Your vet is your best method of fixing any of these problems. Uh, I have a lot of experience at this, but uh, the person that brought this to me, I'm like a last resort. They, there's eggs hanging out, there's blood, there's all sorts of horrible stuff. He contacted nine vets. Vets are very, very busy right now. There's huge problems with backlogging due to COVID, not having enough employees, whatever the reasons are. So this is like a last ditch effort other than euthanizing the animal. So I'm gonna see if I can actually uh, do something that's going to uh, save the life of this animal. So we'll find out. And this is where the eggs would travel down, but this has all been torn. So she did that by pushing the eggs out. So the eggs went out of order. So we have a little bit of vascularization right here. Clamp that off, you support that. But this is, there's no blood vessels at all right here. So we're gonna get this out of here. So the reason we're gonna get that out is because she catches this. Look at that, that is so significant. So now we have to deal with, uh, there's probably at least another five eggs in her. I have to get those out and I have to get them out in a timely fashion. So I'm gonna be very, very aware of uh, a lot of bleeding and uh, internal trauma. So I'm gonna go find out what's going on. There's a couple different ways we can do this. I can find each egg and I can drain each egg. So we're gonna go through the belly scutes. We're just gonna uh, just uh, disinfect that. We're gonna put a large gauge syringe, gnarly. Gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. 
And uh, so let me tell you something about pain. So we are, we're not going into uh, like important organs. We're just gonna go, so it's a little stick through here. It goes into the egg. There's not a lot of uh, pain involved. In this case, we have the eggs, which I need to get out of the animal. So I'm really just interested in draining the eggs and then we're gonna manually uh, push them to see if we can get them to come out. If I feel like it's going to tear a lot of blood vessels, what I'll do is I'll drain the eggs and then I'll actually just do supportive therapy on the animal and see in the next couple days if she can actually, uh, you know, kick them out herself. So if we have the exit and up here, and these all come down in a tube. The problem is the tube is out of order. So now you have maybe an egg that's down here trapped in the oviduct, but it's up here. And if I push too hard, I'm just going to continue to rip. This is straight chlorhexidine too. But she's already she's already gone through like beta and I see. Oh goodness, this one's hard. It's right between the scales. Ready? Yep, I'm ready. And you're sucking out what right now, Dave? Sucking out all the contents of this egg. And you're doing that for Because I'm trying to make the egg smaller because I don't want to tear all her sheath and her oviduct. So this is just going to make it far more likely for her to pass that egg. Because that's the contents. It's like Elmer's glue. I'm bringing the next egg down, right there. Seven, 70 cc's of goo. So you know these are fertile eggs too because they're full size and there is blood. So there's life that was in those eggs. Okay, so I think I'm gonna be able to nail this third egg. Once again, going through the opening. I hold my finger right there, make sure definitely into the egg. another egg right here so you got to be careful when you're pushing like a vet knows if you push too hard if they push too hard you can if it's stuck it can tear that sheath in the tube and then the blood vessels will just just start bleeding and internal all that so you have to be aware is the egg actually moving down with a reasonable amount of pressure that does not cause a bunch of tearing. All right, so I nailed it. I think there's a ruptured egg inside her from before. Okay, so we've, we've got we have every egg drained out. So that was at least at least four eggs, and I think one was already ruptured because she had I had goo coming out earlier. Okay, what's really great, the bleeding has stopped since yesterday, and I want to be really careful. I don't want to do something like uh, it's so disruptive, we're gonna start tearing blood vessels. So right now we've just drained at least four, four of the eggs, and that's almost uh 300 cc's of material. Uh, what's important, you don't want a lot of this material to leak out of this, you know, deceased egg into the body uh, because that can actually poison the animal too. So I got a large volume out. It doesn't seem uh, look, to be looking too bad right now. And what I'm hoping now is I'm gonna put it back into a water solution. She's gonna continue with antibiotics and keeping her in the ambient in the mid 80s. 
uh, actually probably 86, 88 degrees. I'll put her in an incubator, keep her in a shallow water solution, make sure she's hydrated, and I'm gonna hope with enough room in that bin, she can move around and actually start voluntarily passing the eggs. So that's the next thing. So I think we're just gonna set her up, uh, stabilize her, and then see what happens. Hey guys, this is specifically for our Patreon uh, subscribers and anybody that's interested in Patreon. Uh, once a month, we're gonna get into a chat. We're gonna do it on Discord. We're trying to figure out when we would do it. So about an hour, and it's gonna be myself and those people on that tier. And uh, you guys get to ask me all sorts of questions. So the one thing that I want to do here is there's people that keep all sorts of reptiles. I have a general knowledge of reptiles that some people might uh, think is interesting. And so if you have things, let's say breeding or questions and you wanna learn all sorts of different things, you probably wanna get in that thing where you're gonna have uh, some time with me and we can talk about this and it's gonna be to the benefit of everybody in the Patreon. And hopefully we're gonna find it that it's interesting enough. So I wanna do something that's special to you guys to celebrate you guys and your interest in us and your loyalty. And this might be the way to do it. And for the existing Patreon people, you guys are great because you're really just, you guys are just jumping in there and you're showing your support for us, but you're really not asking for anything from me. So I wanna give you guys more. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!